Pearl District is a cultural phenomenon that's sort of evolved from the arts. Hi. Well, the Pearl District is definitely becoming one of the more creative epicenters of downtown Portland. It's beautiful. A lot of parks. Great for my dog. It is full of beautiful older buildings and newer buildings. Lots of people are living here, so there's lots of activity. Pearl District right now is a very vibrant urban environment in the heart of the city of Portland, made up of people living here, people working here, people playing and recreation and the arts. It all started out though back in the 80s. In the 1980s, the pool district was dormant. There were empty warehouses. At four o'clock, the streets were empty. Of course, then you had the rail yard, which is basically two thirds of the pool district, which is an active rail yard, but still very few people. With the freeway system, trucking took over from rail. It could go door to door, which rail couldn't. Rail freight just fell into disuse, and all of the warehousing moved out to the freeways. You know, you'd be walking along what there was of a sidewalk and suddenly a dog would hurl itself against the chain link fence barking because it was there to guard whatever was there. There was nobody around. It was really uh, an abandoned place. That status quo continued for a long time and this really was a case where the Rudat was the sharp stick that got everybody moving again because clearly something had to happen, and yet nobody really knew what. We spent a year recruiting students, business owners, building owners, developers, city officials, and compiled a, a large volumes of information and data that was provided to the RUDAT team furnished by the AIA, which came in for an intense four-day weekend, studying this area, walking it, photographing it, sketching it. It was really their efforts focusing on what could be the property it was bought with the intention of building a business park. It was cheap land, it was flat, it was easy to get to, but then there were other developers around who thought, you know, we could do more than that. And that's when they came to my firm and said, why don't you just come up with a kind of a dream of what it could be? What I saw in the rail yard was a big opportunity. I really I wasn't sure what it was going to be, but I was sure it could be something great. And an organic development process is one that unfolds. It's not prescriptive. You don't know what the next building's going to look like. You don't know what is going to be the building after that. In other words, you respond to the market, and you respond to things that people are responding to. The RUDAT team made some recommendations, some of which were just monumental in what has become the Pearl District today. Among those recommendations was preservation of the historic warehousing district of which we're in right now. I think you were starting to find an influx of artists and creative types in the 80s in some of these old warehouses down here. Pioneers like Al Solheim were buying places and fixing them up and they saw potential where the people didn't. If you look at any of the traditional warehouse districts, which of course went dormant all over the country, they attracted artists. And artists attract people, and people attract businesses. The art community has played a large part of the development of the Pearl, from the early artist studios to the early galleries that pioneered the rougher district. Nothing transforms areas like artists and street trees and to soften it all up. The main thing is create an environment that artists want to go to. One of the requirements that we agreed to with the city was that we would build a neighborhood that would reflect the economic makeup of the city. And so affordable housing became a big part of that component. Over a third of the units are affordable in the Pearl. The important thing is, for a real neighborhood, is you need this mixture. The city council recognized that it was really not necessary to build a parking space 
for every dwelling unit or even every bed. But once the housing did start, it took about 50,000 out of the cost of a house, which means the affordability level drops. So many more people are able to afford, whether they're renting or buying, they're able to afford. So that was a very important thing to do. I think a neighborhood that was just all upper income people would be a pretty boring, uninteresting neighborhood. I think it went very well. And that's really the result of communication and everybody really having the same goal. Build a great neighborhood. The Pearl District, most uniquely, is a, is a vibrant, dense neighborhood in Portland, unlike anything else with a range of housing types, a range of housing scale, a range of incomes, an active retail street life, a range of parks of different types and, and styles that attract people from all over the city. And it's, it's a place that's still an evolving experiment with blocks to go. People are the most important thing. The way you take care of them is you provide them what they need and want. They want community. They like knowing the guy that's at the cash register at the store. They like knowing the cleaner guy. And then plus they like to know each other. The community is what's important. People want to feel safe and they want to feel connected with other people. So if you provide them what they want and what will engage them, then they're going to come. They're going to be happy, you're going to be happy. A neighborhood is successful when people want to be there. It's that simple.